France's economic interests in Africa have been under the spotlight with the crisis in Niger. Is the tide finally turning on France a freak? Good morning. It's another power packed episode of Business Week where you'll get to catch up on all the big business and economic stories of the past week. Today, we're talking about insurance technology, dissecting France's economic interests on the continent. And of course, what will Business Week be without a good dose of Nigerian economic stories? But I'm not alone. I've got the experts to help me out. I'm Rola K. I can wait for Stay tuned. So let's start with a look at what global energy commodities are saying. Of course, since June, all prices have risen by more than 20%. And you can see Brent crude, the global benchmark crude, ending the week on Friday up by 73 basis points. It's up WTI in North America benchmark also up by 86 basis points natural gas a bit sluggish but gasoline feeling the pass through from crude oil prices also up by 2.03 percent we've seen OPEC and OPEC plus its partners make several cuts uh, and unilateral cuts actually from Saudi and Russia as well. But it does appear that momentum on Brent is slowing as it gets nearer the $90 per barrel mark. Inventories, of course, expected to tighten as well as a result of the supply cuts, especially in the US market. Let's see how that goes over the next few weeks or so. Now let's move over to Nigerian equity markets to see how the week ended. The all share index was up slightly by 0.18%, ending at an index of 65,000, just above 65,000. Interestingly here, see the value of deals, 8.362 billion Naira worth of deals. And actually, Seplat, uh, which is dual listed in London and Lagos, accounted for about half of that. We saw uh, net trades on Seplat at about 3.5 billion Naira. Volume of deals, almost half a billion Naira there. And of course, market capitalization on the NSC at 35.572 trillion Naira. Let's look at equity markets from other parts of the world. First, to Europe, wow, seems like a bloodbath. The beers were in action on Friday. On Friday, Eurostock 600 was down. London FTSE, Paris, Germany, and Spain all down while the market still tries to weigh out the impact of the inflation figures from the US. Interesting what has happened to European stocks. We saw tech stocks actually helping to drive that downward pull on the market. Let's see how central bank action, particularly on rates, continues to impact global investor sentiment, sentiment as far as stocks are concerned. What is Wall Street saying? A bit of a mixed picture with Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Index was up by 26 bips, but S&P and NASDAQ were both down and NASDAQ in particularly mirroring what has happened with tech stocks in Europe was down by 65 basis points. Interesting look there from Wall Street and European markets. Now for my business top weeks picks from the week. First story I'd like to explore is Senegal. Senegal is one of the big frontier oil producers in the West African market. Many companies have been flocking offshore Senegal and just this past week, the Africa Finance Corporation is giving money, about 50 million euros, to finance the Sangoma oil field, which is about 7,600 square kilometers, about 100 kilometers just offshore Senegal, and actually is estimated to have about 5 million barrels of crude oil in reserves estimate. So this is a major development for Senegal. It's been trying to explore uh, oil and gas uh, reserves in its offshore basins in recent years. And of course, the government working with the AFC on this project are saying this could really help transform the country industrially, create jobs and increase export proceeds for the Senegalese government. What else do we have here? The Basel IV capital rules are likely to take effect over the next two years. However, banks in the city of London are worried that if the Bank of England does not mirror the action by US regulators to move the implementation of those new capital rules to mid-2025, then it might create competition for the City of London. What exactly does this mean? So regulators around the world are looking at raising capital requirements, the amount of capital banks will have to hold to 16%. 
banks are worried about what the impact of that will be on their profits, obviously, and their equity. But European regulators can actually step in to cause or force a delay. It's not known whether that will happen, but this play and competition within traders in London and the North American market could play out if the Bank of England does not delay the capital rule implementation by six months, moving it to mid-July. So interesting development there for financial markets. Uh, Biden has announced further cubs on US investment in China. Now, US has been worried about semiconductor manufacturing from the Chinese market, has been worried about how Chinese operations could lead to espionage on US assets, and is seeing this as a strategic national security move. It's limiting uh, uh, and introducing rules to curb US investors playing in the Chinese market, but might actually exclude sectors like biotechnology and publicly traded securities. China has responded and said that it is concerned about the move and will act in its own national interest. Now, we don't know what that will be, but we expect those tensions to continue. Brazil has rolled out a $350 billion investment plan to boost the economy. This is under the government of President Lula da Silva. This investment plan is meant to help look at infrastructure investments, investment in green technology, and the energy transition. I will also add that the Brazilian state-owned uh, oil company, Petrobras, also has a $78 billion investment program, around 15% of which will go into energy transition projects. Um, and, and of course, uh, lots of corruption cases have come out from Brazil in recent years. Under the former president, Dilma Rousseff, many of those contractors around a previous investment program will not feature in this new program. So it'd be interesting to see how that works out. Italy is approving a 40% windfall tax on banks. It says that it needs to support low-income households due to rising interest rates. It needs to support mortgage holders. If you recall, about a year ago, Spain also moved to tax the net interest income of banks. Many European banks and banks around the world, due to rising rates, have seen their net interest income actually rise. Now the Italian government wants to place a one-off windfall tax of 40% on that, which will kick in next year. There's a bit of resistance there, but banks will probably have to pay out. And then finally, what do we have? South Africa and China have struck trade agreements worth $2.2 billion. That Chinese foray into the Southern African market, particularly using South Africa as an anchor, we've seen companies like Anglo Gold, Ashanti, Glencore um, also enter into deals in South Africa with Chinese companies. And we expect that trading relationship to continue as China looks to further consolidate its economic and business interests in the southern part of Africa. Now, okay. And now for some other stories from around the world. Oil prices edged higher on Monday and briefly reached their highest levels in nearly four months amid concerns over the escalating crisis in Ukraine and production cuts by Saudi Arabia. Brent crude futures rose 25 cents or 0.3% to $86.49 a barrel in early morning trade, while U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crew, that's WTI, was at $83.05 a barrel, up by 0.3%. Russian oil exports are actually facing a growing risk as the war in Ukraine enters a new phase. Ratings agency Moody's has downgraded the credit ratings of several U.S. banks and warned it was reviewing the status of some of the nation's biggest lenders. Moody's cut the ratings of 10 U.S. banks by one notch and placed some banking giants on review for potential downgrades. Overall, it chained the assessments for 27 banks in the sector. As U.S. interest rates have risen, the rate of increase for the cost of deposits has also outpaced that of loan yields, shrinking the margins of many banks. In a bid to reshape Nigeria's economic landscape and bolster financial stability, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu pledges to end what he describes as the vicious cycle of excessive borrowing for public expenditure. He made the comment while inaugurating the Presidential Committee on Fiscal Policy and Tax Reforms. 
Nigeria's currency, the Naira, extended its slump in black market trading as the nation's dollar shortage deepened two months after the central bank moved to a more flexible exchange rate to encourage inflows. The Naira weakened to 923 Naira per dollar compared with 917 Naira on Wednesday, so it weakened on Thursday. Traders in Lagos said it worsened to an all-time low of 950 Naira to $1 at the parallel market on Thursday afternoon, as against 897 Naira per dollar it traded at the previous day. However, at the official window on Friday, that's just yesterday, data showed that the Naira closed at 740 Naira per dollar. Banks have been unable to come up with the dollars to meet demand, and buyers are increasingly turning to the black market, which is widening the gap between the official exchange rate and the price on the street. Now, you may be asking, where's the convergence? Well, we'll be talking more about that later on the show. Meanwhile, Nigeria's central bank owes JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs a combined sum of $7.5 billion as of the financial year ended December 2022. Also included as, as part of its liabilities is another $6.3 billion owned in foreign currency forwards. This is contained in the audited financial statement of the central bank published on its website. Uh, online news platform Naira Metrics earlier reported the bank reported a profit after tax of 103.8 billion Naira in its recent financial year. The central bank, however, stated it owes Goldman Sachs $500 million and JP Morgan $7 billion in what it classified as securities lending. Finally, Disney on Wednesday reported a loss for the most recent quarter, with the number of subscribers to its streaming service shrinking again. But a pledge to crack down on password sharing sent shares higher in aftermarket trades. The fall in Disney Plus subscriber numbers for the third consecutive quarter came as a crippling writers and actors strike hits the U.S. entertainment industry, threatening the company's ability to produce content that's key to the streaming service's appeal. For the three months that ended on July 1, Disney's net income dropped to $460 million from $1.4 billion in the same period last year, just shy of Wall Street projections of $22.5 billion. Revenue actually climbed by 4% to $22.3 billion. Well, that's all on the Market Roundup.